Hello and welcome to the first of my build series on the Tamiya Dark Impact on the DFO3 chassis. This episode covers steps 1 to 4, which is um, the ball diff and then the associated spur gears and uh, running gear. Starting off then for step 2. Rear differential gear assembly. We've got one off of MA7, 2x25mm cap screw, one off of MB7, 2mm lock nut, one off of MG3, diff joint rear right, MJ4, diff joint rear left, two off of MK3, differential housing plate, Two off of MK4, which is 10 by 0.1 millimeter shim. Two off of MK6, which is differential plates. 10 off of MK7, 3 mil ball bearings. One off of MK9, diff spring. Three off of MK10, diff sponge. Two off, and I've only got one there, but hey, I can get that in a bit. MR1 which is 11, sorry, which is 1510 ball bearing. One off of MR5, which is the ball thrust bearing that I tried to show you in my unboxing, where you, if I tip it up on its edge, we'll try and pick it up and bring it up. Perhaps you can see, you can actually see the ball bearings there. So that's the ball thrust bearing if I didn't mention it before and last but not least two off of MR6 which are 850 bearings and with that we can uh, take a breath and get started. The first task is to glue together MK3 and MK6. Now MK3 looks like they're composite plastics because it feels very hard and uh, obviously MK6 the diff plate is metal so uh, I'm going to use uh, this cyano because uh, I think really it's just to keep them in place um, as you can see it does fit over the slot or the guides and it doesn't spin round on its own so uh, like I say I think it is just to keep it in place um, but because uh, this cyano is super glue I'm going to use my pliers and stick this over and then get my glue like so Excuse me, I've got the sniffles. And then we're just going to try and drop the plate oops, over the top and give it a squidge down with hopefully not getting too much glue on my fingers. He says as he nearly sticks his finger to the pliers. And then just give it a bit of a wipe because this glue has a tendency not to set as fast as the very liquid cyano. And then I'm going to leave them for 10 or 15 minutes for this glue to set better. And then uh, we can go on to the next stage. Now the glue's had time to set on uh, these two bits. Uh, we can go on to the next stage which is uh, installing the ball bearings and uh, fitting the output shafts, shall we say, or diff joints. So, we're going to need the differential gear and as you can see I've already greased it all up and uh, started installing the uh, ball bearings using the supplied ball diff grease and it should just be a simple case and I might have to swap screwdrivers here but 
we should be able to pick these up now. I can't pick it up with that. Not magnetic enough. But we just pick them up, pop them in, and press it in. Like that. And then the same with the other two. And then once they're in, just give them a whiz round, make sure you're getting the ball diff grease on all the surfaces. And then looking at the diagram here, we can take the MJ4, which is, says it's the left side, one of these pieces, pop it in, and as I hope you can see here, there's already a ball bearing in race, a ball race in that because uh, I did a test fit and uh, couldn't get it back out again. So uh, that's a nice snug fit, and that will go on the top there like that. And the other one we can pop on like that, and not forgetting your 850 bearing, which will go on like so. And then, if I remove this for a second so you can see, when you uh, pop this uh, diff gear on, the bearing goes through. And uh, becomes, shall we say, part of the uh, diff gear. And then, as you can see, the shaft sticks out. So it goes together like so. And that's that part, and if you're lucky, which I don't think I will be, no, it's a bit too heavy. So we can leave that there. And we can move on to the next stage, which is screwing all these bits together. And as you can see here, it's telling you to grease the thrust bearing, which I have already done. Um, but it's showing the ordinary grease, not the diff, the ball diff grease. So uh, I've done that. I don't know why, but uh, I've done it. And then you need MA7 to pop over that, and that will slip into this hole here, making sure you get it the right way round. And then we've got D5, and once again I've already popped the, uh, the nylock nut in. I can't remember what that was then. So that's all ready to go. And then we've got the spring. And that slots in like that. And then this goes in between the slots, like so. And you can take your hex drive, slide it up, try and get it in. And then you just keep screwing. So, and there is a note to say don't over tighten this. I don't think I've got it in the right place. Oh, maybe they have. Yeah. And then to test it, to test it, I think if you've got it tight enough. And what you do, I believe, you say it's not been able to get it in, is holding the one, you try and turn both of these at the same time. And if this spins round with these stationary, then you need to tighten it up more. Um, but 
again I don't know if you can see there we'll just try and show you that again in case I was off screen so I can't turn the diff gear on its own I can only turn with either one or other of the uh, output shafts like so and then you can also check if you've got enough light and I doubt if you'll be able to see but to, you should have a bit of the MA7 thread showing to show that it's uh, the nylocks engaged and uh, that's the uh, output shafts connected and then we can swiftly move on to the next stage where we're going to need these three uh, foam sponges or diff sponges and one of them we need to cut in half there's a note here and uh, a one-to-one -one diagram and I don't think it's that critical so uh, I'm just going to roughly line it up with me uh, very sharp scalpel and just start to cut through it put one to one side and checking the diagram again we've got uh, the right side that we put the half sized one in first that and then a full sized one and then on the other side just a full sized one and then it's just a case of installing the bearings and uh, these are a loose fit but uh, make sure you get these shims on the inward side like so and we're ready for the next stage or should I say next step step three is uh, a quick and easy one compared to the last one and that's uh, attaching the rear differential gear and for this we're going to need parts A1 and A4 and obviously the diff itself and metal parts MB1 uh, four off which are three by ten mil self tappers um, and it's just a case of lining everything up checking the orientation of your diff and it slots in fairly simply and then this plate slides over like so and you just screw it together um, but again he does say to grease this up first and what I'll be doing before I put this on is I'm going to go around all of these faces here with some uh, of my spare anti-wear grease and uh, I'll get on and grease these up as you can see I've gone around and greased the uh, differential gear and also, if I hope you can see, I've gone round this part of A1 with the anti-wear grease. You don't need very much at all for this. It does go a very long way. And then, as you hope you can see there, I've gone round the whole of that surface with it as well to hopefully... Uh, stop dust getting in and then as I say it's just a simple case checking your orientations and then you just slide it in and you do need to check the orientation because uh, I don't know if you can see there but this top cut out here is for the bevel gear when you make that in step 4 and then again I'm not sure if this will go in I think it may well 
fit either way so check that these two uh, posts are at the bottom and like that and it should just push in and then we can pop the four screws in Oops. Sorry about this, but I'm not left handed. And then we can just tighten them up and move on to step four. Step four is uh, making up the uh, rest of the gears for the rear gearbox. And uh, as I think you can see here, we've got quite a long list of parts needed. So we'll get straight in with uh, part MB4 one-off, which is 2 by 2.6 by 10 mil screw pin, 2 times MB6 4 mil E-rings, uh, 1 MC7 2 by 10 mil shaft, um, 1 MH2, which is a 34 tooth bevel gear. 1 MH3, which is 22 and 34 tooth uh, bevel gears. 1 MK1, which is main shaft with the uh, steel gear on it. 1 MK2, which is the bevel shaft. Then 5 off of MK5, which is 5 by 0.1mm shims. And then two MR3s which are 1050 bearings, three MR4s which are 950 bearings, uh, one MR7 which is an 830 bearing, something I've not seen before I don't think, and finally one off of MS7 which is a 5 by 40 millimeter hollow tube. So with that uh, we'll get cracking. The first stage is to make up the counter gear, this one here, and again on all of these it shows you to grease them up, but uh, I think we'll do that uh, just before we get to step 5. So with that we need the MH3 bevel gear and we need a 950 bearing, which is uh, one of these little beauties. That should go in, he says. There we go. Wow. Well, that was a tight fit. And then the other side, oh no, we need another 950. Is this going to go in better? And that one just virtually falls in. Then we've got the hollow MS7 that goes through. And then we've got two of these 5 by 0.1 millimeter shims. That's the first one done. Then we can move on to uh, the propeller joint. And for this we'll start off I think with MK2 and then we want a 1050 bearing. So it was just like so. One of the MK5 shims. And then 
and an E clip but from looking at this diagram it goes on this slot here can take MC7 and pop it through that hole and then we can take MH2 the bevel gear oops and pop it through and that's not a very tight fit either down there for a second and then get part D3 that I forgot to mention in my introduction and we can slide that over as you see we've got straight edges on this uh, MK2 bevel shaft so it should just be a case of hopefully figuring out and just popping it on, quite a tight fit just about lined that up and then take this uh, MB4, the screw pin and pass it through hopefully there we go that fits, we just screw that in yeah that should do is oops, pop that back in and then the last bit in this is the MR7 which is the 830 bearing the bevel gear done and the last one in this section is the main shaft again we take the main shaft we've got uh, MB6 E clip that goes over here then the last two MK5 shims Ten fifty bearing, and then the last nine fifty bearing on that side, and there we have all three gears made up, ready to go into the gearbox. And with that, I think I've gone on long enough for this episode, so. Uh, We'll leave it there and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.